Hello, welcome to lecture 6 of module 3. This is lecture number 27 of the course. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on classical Langevin noise and then we will go over to the quantum counterpart of it. So let us begin. In the last class, we continued our discussion on classical regime from the previous one and we analyzed the function k of omega and we already know that the real part of the function k of omega is related to the frequency shift of the mechanical oscillator on the other hand the imaginary part of the function k of omega is related to the extra damping and this damping is induced due to the coupling to the light mode and this function k of omega it's a function of the intensity of the laser light as well as the susceptibility of the cavity field because we know the expression for the susceptibility and to also simplifying the notation by introducing a parameter called z that is the linearized optomechanical coupling strength we can easily work out the explicit expression for k of omega and from there we can find out the real part as well as the imaginary part so when we analyze it uh, this expression can be uh, worked out this is the extra damping or the light induced damping term and when we plot the damping optical damping versus the detuning parameter we saw that uh, for the regime when the cavity damping kappa is much much larger than the resonance frequency of the mechanical oscillator we get a anti-symmetric plot and we shows that for the uh, detuning when it is negative delta less than zero uh, we have a positive uh, damping on the other hand if delta uh, this detuning parameter is greater than zero we have a negative detuning that means will uh, uh, will get the heating effect uh, when the detuning is positive and will get cooling effect when the detuning is negative however these peaks the two peaks that we obtain are not resolvable much uh, and the effect is also not that great but uh, if we go into the other regime when the uh, this cavity decay rate is much much smaller than the resonance frequency of the mechanical oscillator then these two peaks are highly resolved and this regime is known as the resolved sideband regime and here we will get prominent cooling or heating effect depending on whether the detuning parameter is less than zero or or it is greater than zero so then we also discuss the optical spring effect here when the regime this kappa uh, much much greater than the resonance frequency of the mechanical oscillator we get an anti-symmetric plot where we plotted the frequency shift versus the detuning parameter and we saw that in the negative detuning regime when delta bar is less than zero the frequency shift is negative on the other hand if delta is greater than zero that means for positive detuning the frequency shift is positive which essentially mean is that for delta less than zero delta bar that is the modified detuning parameter if it is less than zero then when the frequency shift is negative that means the spring gets softer on the other hand when the frequency shift is positive the spring get actually harder and this is a problem because uh, as regards the cooling is concerned we know that delta less than zero is the domain where cooling is observed and if we try to cool it harder i'm talking about the regime where kappa is much much greater than omega if we try to cool the mechanical oscillator harder we will have to increase the intensity and in that case the spring will get softer and softer and that will result in instability this issue can be circumvented if we go over to the other regime that is the resolved sideband regime and here this optical spring effect can be avoided 
so this concluded our discussion on the classical regime now we are ready for discussion on the quantum regime however the quantum regime is different from the classical regime due to the so called quantum noise and quantum noise are generally discussed by various formalism and one formalism is quantum langevin approach or the so called quantum langevin equation in this course we are going to this uh deal the issue by quantum langevin equation to appreciate quantum langevin equation we started discussing classical langevin equation and to do that we began with the usual classical damped harmonic oscillator model but this model is uh, not exactly accurate because in thermal equilibrium uh, as per the solution of this equation as i explained in the last class that the amplitude or the displacement will of the oscillator will decay but and but that is not the case in thermal equilibrium because uh, because of thermal equilibrium the oscillation will not actually die down with time and this is this is a fundamental reason behind it because this model as per this model this model is not time invariant and uh, physically it means that the transfer of energy is always from the mechanical oscillator to the environment not from the environment to the mechanical oscillator and if we want to be in equilibrium then both uh, environment as as well as the mechanical oscillator has to participate equally so this issue is uh, addressed by considering the environment which is also known as the bat to we model the bath as a collection of independent harmonic oscillator here we consider it as a n harmonic a collection of n number of harmonic oscillator having different uh, position variable and the momentum variable and frequency i at ba oscillator has frequency omega i its mass as mi like that and the system is 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 simply a single harmonic oscillator we took so this is the hamiltonian for the system and this is for the bat and this is the coupling between the system coordinate and the bat coordinate and this term is there just to compensate or cancel the uh, frequency shift due to the coupling between the system and the bat then we went on to write down the equation of motion for the bat variable as well as the system variable and we after doing the analysis we ended up into a, a very nice equation and this uh, model we finally got and it turns out that uh, in the earlier model the right hand side was uh, zero but now we are having a non zero term and this term is known as the langevin noise or it it is also called the Uh, Langevin force and this term is arising because of the interaction of the os uh, because of the contribution from the surrounding or the environment. So this model nicely explains many of the classical uh, statistical phenomena as regards this damped harmonic oscillator is concerned. And here we define one function that is called it is known as the memory function. We can simplify this memory function. and to do that let us define a function co uh, denoted by j of omega and this is known as the the bat spectral density the bat spectral density so j it is defined like this j of omega is equal to uh, it would be pi into sum over all the n bat oscillators and it is ci square divided by twice mi omega i and delta omega minus omega i so this is omega uh, delta omega minus omega i this is the delta function and using this we can simplify this expression or we can rewrite it in a uh, interesting form so this in terms of this bat spectral density we can write gamma of t the memory function as 2 by m integration 0 to infinity d omega by pi 
z of omega by omega cos omega t so this is exactly the same function as that of this one here okay if you are not convinced let me quickly prove it for you so let me uh, start with this function so we have 2 by m integration 0 to infinity d omega by pi and we also have 1 by omega cos omega t and j omega j omega let me now put the uh, function j omega here this one so that is pi into summation i is equal to 1 to n ci square twice m i omega i and delta omega minus omega i this i can write as 1 by m summation i is equal to 1 to n ci square divided by twice m i omega i and integration 0 to infinity d omega delta omega minus omega i divided by omega and i have here cos omega t now you know uh, from your mathematical physics course or mathematics course this property of the Dirac delta function suppose we have this function f of x and delta function delta x minus a is there and this integration will give you f of a here so you can easily use that using this property i can write it as 1 by m summation i is equal to 1 to n and i have psi uh, ci square divided by twice m i now this would become omega i because omega is equal to omega i i have to put so therefore i will have twice m i omega i square cos omega i t so if you now you can see that this is exactly this function okay so this is exactly the same form that we obtained so you see that the unknown parameters this ci mi and omega i these are unknown parameters these are related to the but this can be expressed by using a single function j of omega the way we have defined this function j of omega okay here so this function is very important and for many and this is called the as i said it is called the bath spectral density for many practical cases for many practical practical cases or realistic situations this function can be chosen as j of omega as m into gamma m into omega and this is termed as ohmic damping this is called ohmic damping its significance will be clear very soon to you it's called ohmic damping now if i uh, take my bath spectral density to be of this form then you will see that the memory function gamma of t it will take a simple form and the this function memory function is in terms of j of omega is this 2 by m 0 to infinity d omega by pi and here we have here j of omega we are now choosing it as m gamma m into omega divided by omega cos omega t and this i can write as twice gamma m by pi integration 0 to infinity cos omega t d omega now here uh, we can apply a trick here because we know the so-called delta function say delta of t is defined as minus infinity to plus infinity uh, e to the power i omega t uh, d omega in fact here 1 by 2 pi is also there okay so this means that uh, i can now write it as minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i omega t d omega is equal to twice pi delta of t uh, and 
this function 0 to infinity this integration 0 to infinity cos omega t d omega which i can write it as minus infinity to plus infinity half of my because it's a even function i can write it as minus half of minus infinity to plus infinity and i can write here e to the power i omega t okay d omega and as you can see then i can have it as half into 2 pi delta of t so uh, what i have here i can express this whole thing as twice gamma m by pi and uh, using this relation here i have it as pi into delta of t or i will have it as gamma of m in fact twice gamma m into delta t now you see this clearly shows that this memory function gamma of t is does not depend on any previous time or any earlier time so it does not depend on it is instantaneous you see because of this delta of t it does not depend on depend on its history or on any earlier time any earlier time say t dash so t is always greater than t dash this implies that the bath has no memory uh, and this process is said to be markovian so this is a ohmic damping process and ohmic damping process uh, bath contains no memory of its earlier history and these processes are called markovian process and markovian processes are easy to deal with and mostly the systems we deal with are markovian and in this course we will focus only on markovian processes only as regards uh, the bath is concerned okay so now choosing uh, taking this as our memory function we can very easily rewrite our equation of motion for the damped harmonic oscillator and under that process the damped harmonic oscillator equation would be m q double dot you can verify it it will be m omega square q and here you will have m gamma m q dot t is equal to this is the Langevin noise or the Langevin force so this equation finally we obtain and maybe uh, some of you have seen this kind of equation in your in classical statistical uh, physics uh, or in a statistical mechanics book and now we will focus a bit more on this function or this Langevin noise or Langevin force because this is going to be very important and this will enable us to understand intricacies of quantum noise. The parameter for the Langevin noise or Langevin force xi of t we express it as follows it was sum over all n oscillators i is equal to 1 to n ci we have actually written it previously i'm just repeating it again here qi of 0 that is the initial position of i at path oscillator ci is the coupling mi omega i square q of 0 that is the initial position of the mechanical oscillator cos of omega i t plus pi of 0 divided by m i omega i sin omega i t okay this is the expression now if the system but coupling ci is weak uh, then we can ignore this second term here and if we ignore this second term then we can write xi of t the Langevin noise this is we are doing under the approximation that system but coupling system but coupling is weak coupling ci is weak then as you know that ci square would be further weak then xi of t we can write it as summation i is equal to 1 to n first term will retain so, okay this would be ci qi of 0 
cos omega i t plus p i of 0 divided by m i omega i sin omega i t okay to understand the nature of this Langevin noise let us now calculate the first two moments first moment would be the mean that is xi of t and it would be averaged over the bat and the second moment and which is uh, basically the autocorrelation function that xi of t the Langevin noise at time t and Langevin noise at another time t dash so this will give us the correlation between the these bad variables or Langevin noise at two different times so now we are going to calculate these two very important quantities average of the Langevin noise and the second moment so to calculate xi of t if we take the average we now have the expression when the coupling is weak then it would be summation i is equal to 1 to n ci and here i have qi of 0 i have to take the ensemble average of all the oscillators that's the meaning of this symbol here i'm taking the ensemble average and i will explain it further i have cos omega i t then here i have uh, from this i will have pi zero again it is the ensemble average divided by m i omega i sine omega i t this calculation may look uh, cumbersome but actually it is straightforward and i could have actually directly written down the answers what is xi of t and what is this second moment but i think it is better to uh, do it in details because it will be very useful uh, uh, for you now hopefully you know that the average of a uh, variable say f say average of a variable f in the phase space uh, is given by this it is uh, integration over all the phase space variable q and p dq dp and then we have this variable f and then we have this probability function uh, p uh, which is a function of the variable q and p okay and here this probability function we are taking uh, taking it the so-called canonical ensemble ever here the therefore the probability function would be this it would be some constant into e to the power minus hamiltonian or the energy divided by kbt in fact here h is equal to it's a harmonic oscillator we are dealing with this is h is equal to p square by 2m plus half m omega square q square and this probability if you integrate it over the whole phase space and you know that this integration must give you equal to 1 because the total probability must be equal to 1 over the when you integrate it over the whole phase space and using this actually you can find out this in uh, constant a and it is very easy to just use the gaussian integral formula then you will get it as omega by 2 pi kbt and we are going to use this uh, later on as you will see now the average of the initial position uh, say this quantity because to calculate this lens average of this lens have been noise we need to calculate uh, this ensemble average of the initial position of the ith uh, bat oscillator as well as the corresponding the momentum uh, moment initial momentum of the bat oscillator first let me show you how to calculate this quantity qi initial uh, position of the bat oscillator in fact the ensemble average so rather than writing it uh, this zero here i will just write it as qi uh, this is what we are now going to calculate now this would be integration 
over the whole phase space but we are going to calculate it for the all the oscillators i'll explain it and this is basically the multiplication okay i will explain it just let me first write it p this is probability q y the probability function q y p i and we have here d q i d p i and of course we have also q i q i is the variable now let me explain this particular term so we have many variables and suppose we have first variable is say q1 and the corresponding probability function for that is a function of q1 uh, p1 okay and then we have dq1 dp1 and then we have probability q2 p2 and then we have dq2 dp2 and so on but we are now interested in working out it the variable we have is qi so we have this probability function qi pj pi and we have dqi uh, dpi and then we also if we can have another say uh, z variable z oscillator so qj pj so dqj dp dpj but we are we are need we need to calculate only the q white uh, this thing oscillator ensemble average for this particular oscillator so as you know that this particular term this is the probability total probability with respect to the variable uh, uh, in the phase space this would be equal to uh, one corresponding to q1 p1 variable and similarly for q2 p2 this would be equal to one because the total probability uh, as i i think i wrote it here that this total probability yes this one it has to be equal to one so all the terms will get normalized and you will be left out with only one corresponding to one variable say qi so i hope you are getting the notation here so this would be this probability function of the variable uh, for the oscillator qi uh, i -th oscillator qi pi and you have here dqi dpi and this is the integration we have to work out and then i have here ai and integration minus infinity to plus infinity i know the, what is this function so we have here say for qi uh, dqi and e to the power minus mi omega i square uh, qi square this is from the hamiltonian function i have here twice kbt let me again show you here the hamiltonian function i just put it here for the corresponding ith oscillator and then the for the momentum part i have here dpi e to the power minus pi square divided by twice mi kbt all right now as you can see that this integration this is a this integrand here is a odd function okay so therefore this is going to be zero so overall i get that this implies that this expectation or sorry the average value of the uh, bath position so this would be if you take the ensemble average you are going to get zero so in the similarly similarly you can show that uh, the corresponding momentum ensemble average for the momentum is also going to be zero now because we have all both these average quantities this is zero and this is zero so quite clearly the average of the lengthening noise xi of t and is equal to zero and this is also expected physically because this is fluctuation after all so this is equal to zero now using the which should be useful uh, for us using the oddness of the integrands it it, you can easily show that and it's easily understandable that you will get say qi of zero pj of zero and that would be equal to zero and this is actually the same as for the two different oscillators say ith oscillator and zh oscillator if you calculate this particular quantity a product of this average uh, product 
uh, average of the uh, products here for the Z oscillator and the uh, I oscillator, their corresponding momenta and position. So you will get uh, this as zero, and that is because of the integrand is an odd integrand, odd integrand, okay, odd integrand, okay. So this would be this would be useful for us. Now, what about uh, this particular quantity that is the second moment xi of t and xi of t dash? Okay, let us uh, work it out now. Now, you can actually put down the expression for xi of t and xi of t dash and take the product. And if you take the average, let me write down what you will get. You will get there will be two sum for the i -th oscillator and the z -th oscillator uh, you are taking xi of t it is taking over the sum over the variable i and xi of t as you are taking the sum over the variable z so that's why i'm combining both these things in this expression i z going okay otherwise i can also write it here i have i and then i have z going to n and then i will have ci cz and here I will get several terms. Let me write down all the terms QI0, QZ0, and here you will have cos omega IT, cos omega ZT dash. You just have to take the product and then the average. Then you will have PI of 0, PZ of 0. Then you take the average. Then you have MI, MZ omega i omega z sin omega i t sin omega z t dash and you will have term q i 0 uh, q i 0 p z 0 p z 0 and you have to take the average divided by uh, you will have m z omega z okay and you have cos omega i t sine omega z t dash plus the last term would be q z 0 p i 0 and take the average divided by m i omega i sine omega i t uh, then you will have cos okay you will have here it would be cos omega z t dash so these are the terms you will have now already uh, our life is simple because we know that this is equal to zero so therefore this particular term would be uh, this one would be zero and similarly this will be zero so we'll be left out to just calculate this particular quantity and this particular quantity it can be very easily calculated let me show one calculation so let us calculate uh, this quantity say let us calculate in the similar way you can calculate it would be qy of 0 and qz of 0 so let us calculate it so i am going to find out the ensemble average so i have here it as integration over the whole phase space for all the oscillators then all the variables all the oscillators i consider so in the similar way i have here qi say pi i have variable dqi uh, dpi and here i have qi qz okay so this would be actually if i break it up then i have two functions minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity dqi dp i i have variable number i at qi uh, i at oscillator is there correspondingly i have here qi this function probability function qi pi and i have also the z oscillator for that i have here qz so it would be dqz dpz and the probability function corresponding probability function is 
p of q z p z all right so this is what i will have integration is from minus infinity to plus infinity and all the other uh, variables of course would get normalized as i given you the logic little bit ago now here quite clearly uh, this term would go to uh, this will vanish actually whole integral will vanish if i is not equal to j if i is not equal to j these integrals will vanish integrals will vanish and we will get non-zero number will get a non-zero value if i is equal to uh, j we will have uh, we will have non-zero value so therefore let us take i is equal to j non-zero value uh, so therefore we will write this ensemble average q i q q z and to denote it uh, i will have only one function that is because now i is equal to j so i have here d q i q i square minus infinity plus infinity e to the power minus m i omega i square q i square divided by twice k b t and the other one this integration minus infinity plus infinity dpi e to the power minus pi square divided by twice mi kbt by the way i have taken i is equal to j so to note that this is the kronecker delta remember that i am taking now i is equal to j if i is not equal to j then this will go to zero okay so uh, this is the meaning of the presence of this uh, Kronecker delta here. Now you can solve this integration very simply just to remind you about the Gaussian integral. You can use the Gaussian integrals and hopefully you know but let me write here say from minus infinity to plus infinity x to the power 2 n e to the power minus alpha x square dx. This is equal to root over pi by alpha uh, you have twice n minus 1 factorial uh, 2 alpha to the power n or uh, also maybe you it is also useful e to the power minus alpha x square dx minus infinity to plus infinity that would be root over pi by alpha you can utilize this uh, intri uh, integral formulas and then if you put ai is equal to omega i by twice pi kbt then you will be able to obtain this expression this is very straightforward uh, calculations you can do some of the calculations we will do in the problem solving session as well for your practice purpose so you will be able to get it as kbt divided by m i omega i square and also to emphasize that we are here i is equal to j only then only this would become a uh, non-zero uh, quantity so we will get a non-zero value similarly similarly you can show that ex exactly similar calculation you can do for the other one for the momentum variables ensemble average for the product of the p i p j that would be equal to m i k b t similarly here would be Kronecker delta ij now having these expressions as i said that now we are left we just need to find out these two uh, quantities only here so we have found out these two quantities now if we put it then finally after some uh, manipulation or algebra which we will do it in the problem solving session hopefully we'll show it the detailed calculations you will get this final expression for the uh, moments first uh, the or the autocorrelation function for the Langevin noise and it has huge physical significance which I am going to explain the term would be it would be equal to twice m gamma m kbt uh, delta t minus t dash okay so this is what finally we obtain this autocorrelation function means that each interaction of the bat let me write here each interaction 
of the bat with the system oscillator with the system oscillator through the Langevin noise through xi of t is correlated is correlated only to itself only to itself and to no other interaction and to no other interactions what it means is that this means that the bat is markovian the bat is markovian okay this assumption however this assumption however holds this assumption holds uh, when the duration of each collision of the bath oscillator with the system oscillator is smaller than the time period of mechanical oscillator so collision time or okay collision time is smaller smaller than the time period of mechanical oscillator the time period of mechanical oscillations as well as it also it should be smaller smaller than the damping time so damping time so this you okay let me write it properly uh, this is damping the collision time is smaller than the damping time and damping time is given by inverse of gamma m okay another thing this term twice m gamma m kbt this is the measure of the magnitude of the fluctuating thermal force and the strength of the strength of the uh, fluctuation as you can see from this from these terms that it varies directly as the mechanical damping gamma m and of course this is a manifestation of the fluctuation dissipation theorem that we discussed earlier now if if you recall the so called winner kinsin theorem that we discuss earlier in the context of displacement variable x of the movable mirror so let me write here the winner kinsin theorem once again winsor winner kinsin theorem that we discussed this is s x x of omega which represents the noise spectrum and this noise spectrum was the fourier transform of the correlator the displacement at time t and at two different times uh, the product of the displacements at two different times and in the context of langevin noise we can for langevin noise we can similarly define a quantity as xi xi of omega which is termed as spectral noise density this term the spectral noise density and this is the fourier transformation of the correlator of the noise at two different times psi of t xi of t and xi of zero and you have e to the power i omega t dt this is the fourier transform of the correlator and we can now put the expression for this already we know there would be dt e to the power i omega t so what we know is we have this expression just let us put t this is equal to zero here and then we can write it as twice m gamma m kbt kbt all right and this is delta t now if we apply the dirac delta function property then it will be simply this integral will be twice m gamma m kbt so from here you see that uh, 
this spectral noise density is independent of frequency omega so this term as it it clearly shows that this is independent independent of frequency uh, omega and this is often uh, it terms as say xi of t represents it represents what is called white noise because of the frequency independence okay by the way we can express the Langevin noise uh, in the frequency domain as well by using the Fourier transformation so xi of omega is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity the it would be simply the Fourier transformation of xi of t and this is going to be useful for us because as you know that it is many times useful to work in the frequency domain now let us discuss the quantum counterpart of classical Langevin noise again let us consider the bath to be a collection of independent this time quantum harmonic oscillators at some temperature t we know from our earlier classes that the density operator for the thermal state uh, of these oscillators are given by this expression in the number state basis rho thermal that is the density operator for the thermal state would be sum over n is equal to 0 to infinity this is probability uh, pn and this is the fox state that's how we can write the density operator uh, here this pn the probability function is e to the power minus en en is the energy of the harmonic oscillator and it's divided by summation n is equal to 0 to infinity e to the power minus en by kbt and you know that en is equal to n plus half h cross omega that's the energy for the harmonic oscillator and generally we don't worry about this constant term and we write it simply as n h cross omega uh, you can quickly show that the trace of this density operator should be equal to one and it is indeed equal to one as you can see if i take the trace of this de uh, density operator it will be say n is equal to zero to infinity and pn and here i have n n in fact uh, i should put here say k is equal to zero to infinity and here i have k and i have n and k and because this is equal to delta kronecker delta n k and using this immediately you can see that i can write it as n is equal to zero to infinity i will simply will be left out with this pn and this is the sum over all the probabilities and that is equal to one okay now the average uh, phonon number because these are thermal oscillators so quanta let us consider uh, them to be phonons so average phonon number can also be calculated very easily so let me denote the phonons by the annihilation operator b so phonon number would be b dagger b the symbol a is reserved for photons so b dagger b uh, the expectation value would be we have to calculate this quantity trace of rho thermal d dagger b let me quickly show you so this would be say sum over l is equal to zero to infinity l this is a bra here then i have b dagger b and rho uh, thermal is n is equal to zero to infinity p n n and l okay again this is your chronator chronicle delta delta n l so if i use it so i will immediately get the expression n is equal to 0 to infinity and i will have n pn so this is what we have to work out and pn already we know so let me write here so b dagger b expectation value is summation 
in fact expression for pn is known to us so we will get this as summation n is equal to 0 to infinity n e to the power minus en by kbt divided by uh, e to the power minus en by K, kbt this kind of things we have actually worked out elsewhere also but let us quickly do it so this would be summation n e to the power it's harmonic oscillator so we have n h cross omega m by kbt and uh, here it is summation here n is equal to 0 to infinity n is equal to 0 to infinity e to the power minus n h cross omega m by kbt okay now this can be quickly worked out just remind you that this is you can write it as e to the power minus ns if you take summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity then you'll have 1 plus e to the power minus s plus e to the power minus 2s plus so on and this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power minus s and also this expression we can write e to n into e to the power n s n is equal to 0 to infinity we can write it as minus uh, derivative of d of ds you can verify it it's very simple e to the power n s n is equal to 0 to infinity and this would be therefore minus d of ds this already we know this term so that is this one so 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power s and this will give e to the power minus s divided by 1 minus e to the power minus s square right and if you use it then you will get b dagger b the usual expression you will get and this would be e to the power minus s cross omega m by kbt divided by 1 minus e to the power s cross omega m by kbt or we can write it in this form also it would be 1 divided by e to the power s cross omega m by kbt minus 1 okay this is the average uh, number of phonons in the in this uh, thermal oscillator okay now let us calculate the this is important let us now calculate the position position correlation function position position correlation this we have done in the classical context now here we will do it for the quantum case position position correlation uh, for an ensemble for an ensemble of n harmonic oscillator n harmonic oscillators okay let us do it so to do that basically what i want to calculate is this quantity qi qj and take the average now we will need to because it is quantum case we will need to know the density operator overall so that would be because there are n number of harmonic oscillator and all these are independent harmonic oscillator for say oscillator number one uh, which says n1 number of photons there so phonons there so n1 n1 that is the density operator for that for the other second oscillator let us say it has n2 n2 go n1 go from 0 to infinity n2 goes from 0 to infinity and then you will have p n2 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 here okay and this way you will have up to uh, capital n number of oscillator so you will have p n n you will have n capital n then this n n okay this looks cumbersome so we can write it in a short on, short hand notation and then we will write it as sum i will explain the terms here i can write it as this in bracketed term n k then this is the multiplication okay and we have p n k and i will write it as n k and i'll have this bra of this guy 
okay let me explain what i mean by this bracketed term here n k means that i am having n1 n2 up to n capital n on the other hand this gate of bracketed n k symbolizes the fact that we are talking about products of all this n1 direct product of n1 n2 up to n capital n now we can work out the expectation value of the product of q i q z that would be equal to trace of rho thermal into q i q z this i can write it as sum over say n p this is n p and then i will close this by gate n p and we have in between rho thermal q i q z i already have the expression for rho thermal so i will just use it here this would be n p rho thermal is summation over n k this is the multiplication p n k and we have n k get n k then the bra of n k okay and we have q i q z and it is finally we have n p now we can use the fact that the scalar product of n p and n k or rather uh, okay that is what we have this you see this we can take outside so if i take the scalar product of n p n k that would be equal to delta n p n k that is the kronecker delta and you can use the property of this kronecker delta then you will we can write this final expression so that would be sum over n k then we have p n k here then this would be n k q i q z n k okay so we will now build up things from here in the next class let me stop here for today in this lecture we have completed our discussion on classical Langevin noise. We have worked out the first and the second moments of Langevin noise in the classical context. Then we started discussing quantum counterpart of it by considering the Bath oscillator as a collection of independent quantum harmonic oscillators. In the next class, we will continue our discussion on quantum noise. So, see you in the next lecture. Thank you.